Welcome to Dr. Adrift. And in this episode, we'll be talking about how to use coffee to run faster for longer. Coffee, or more specifically, caffeine, is a ergogenic aid. And an ergogenic aid is a variable that you can implement to improve performance of an athlete in an activity. Caffeine has been found to improve endurance performances. Several randomized controlled trials have demonstrated this. A randomized controlled trial, or RCT, is essentially when you um, randomize two groups and you give one the variable you're interested in investigating. So, for example, one group would be given a placebo, um, and in this case, the other group would be given caffeine. Um, They tend to be blinded, so the individual doesn't know what they are getting. What tends to be seen is that groups given caffeine in the period before the endurance activity tends to compete at faster speeds for longer periods compared to the placebo group. The performance enhancing effects of caffeine or the ergogenic effects. Number one, it increases your alertness, concentration and focus. Number two, it has an analgesic effect. So it actually reduces your perception of pain and effort. And thirdly, it increases the muscle's ability to work for longer periods until fatigue. It's been known for some time that caffeine ingestion increases endurance performances. However, there is a growing body of evidence that consumption of caffeine in the form of coffee also has these benefits. There's been RCTs looking at uh, 1500 meter runners, um, one mile running races and further distance endurance events. Um, that has shown athletes um, consuming caffeine in the preceding period to the start of the race um, actually get better outcomes compared to the placebo group who received decaffeinated coffee. So let's now talk about these proposed mechanisms that cause caffeine to have a endurance performance enhancing effect. I think it's clear to understand that if caffeine allows you to focus and concentrate more, um, then you're automatically at an advantage. If you are less likely to feel pain compared to your adversaries and you feel that a intensity of work is easier from a perceptual point of view, then you're more likely to be able to run at these faster rates for longer. So there's that psychological component to it, no doubt. What is interesting is the physiological effects on energy metabolism or energy use. Caffeine has been shown to increase the body's ability to break down fat stores and mobilize fats. So you store fats in the form of something called triglycerides in adipose tissue. Caffeine has actually been shown to increase the mobilization of these fats to their free smaller forms called free fatty acids. So free fatty acids get mobilized into the blood and muscles can actually use this form of fat as an energy source for muscle contractions. What this does is actually preserve the muscle's glycogen stores and allows you to use more fatty acids as an energy source and preserve your glycogen stores for longer. This means that your muscles and the ability to work at high intensities for longer increases and your fatigability duration is extended. Another potential um, explanation for this caffeine-induced performance-enhancing effect is the fact that caffeine causes an increase in the secretion of adrenaline from the adrenal medulla um, of the adrenal gland. And adrenaline prepares the body for activity by increasing blood flow to the muscles and also increases the rate and contractility of the heart and increases the availability of free fatty acids which all has a synergistic effect on preparing the body for exercise. 
Okay, let's now talk about the ergogenic dosage of caffeine and the absence of a dose-response relationship. Caffeine's ergogenic endurance effects have consistently been seen at 2 to 5 milligrams per kilogram body mass. A single espresso contains around 80 to 150 milligrams of caffeine. Unfortunately, coffee's caffeine content is quite variable depending on the coffee bean, the roasting period, production techniques and brewing process. This dosing variability is one of the downsides of using coffee as a performance enhancer and why some athletes use caffeine in other forms such as caffeine anhydrous or carb caffeine gels for a more controlled reproducible dosing. An important point is that ergogenic effects of caffeine have been seen even at low doses of caffeine and the effect can be maintained even after five hours from consumption. What is really also very important to understand is that there is no dose response relationship. So higher caffeine doses are not going to give you a more of a beneficial effect than lower doses. So I repeat to you, that there's no additional performance enhancing benefit from doses above five milligrams per kilogram body mass. And with greater doses, you're actually in fact more likely to get the unwanted side effects. These include feelings of restlessness, headaches, tremors, anxiety, palpitations, and insomnia. Unfortunately, there is increasing numbers of A&E attendances with the effects of overdosing of caffeine in the forms of so-called energy drinks, uh, which contained high levels of caffeine and taurine. So it's really important to uh, be careful with any caffeine consumption. The European Food Safety Authority advises that a single dose of caffeine up to 200 milligrams, which is approximately 3 milligrams per kilogram body mass, from all sources do not raise safety concerns for the general healthy adult population. They also advise that the same amount of caffeine does not raise safety concerns when consumed less than two hours prior to intense physical exercise under normal environmental conditions. Okay, so let's now move on to talk about why an individual who wants to get performance enhancement from coffee or caffeine ingestion should avoid coffee habitual drinking. Okay, so habitual drinking means regular exposure to coffee. Um, so people's sensitivity to uh, caffeine does seem to vary. Um, there are likely physiological, genetic and environmental factors at play here. Um, but what an athlete wants is to experience the ergogenic effect without the side effects. And the single most important thing to try and promote is to stop the habitual intake of coffee and any alternative caffeinated ingredients. Okay, so caffeine tolerance occurs when a regular user of caffeine gradually becomes less responsive to the caffeine. Um, and this occurs due to um, various metabolic adaptations in the body, uh, which come about as a result of regular consistent exposure. So what I'm trying to say here is the, one of the most important factors that will determine whether you experience an er ergogenic effect from coffee when ingesting is your um, long-term behavior with respect to caffeine and coffee consumption. So the more frequently you consume it, the less likely you are to experience the ergogenic effects of it when you consume it before an event. In this final chapter, let's show some implementation of some of the principles discussed. I'm going to talk about what I do to optimize my chances of um, experiencing the ergogenic effect of caffeine consumption just before an endurance event. Uh, so what I do is I uh, avoid habitual coffee drinking and caffeine intake, uh, especially in the lead up to a competition. Um, I avoid caffeine containing foods and beverages at least four to six days before the event. This reduces the risks of desensitization to caffeine and optimize uh, caffeine's potential for the ergogenic effects when taking just before the event. 
Um, I really save caffeine ingestion only for when it really matters. That way I ensure the effect uh, when I need it. I tend to get my caffeine fix in the form of a single or double shot espresso roughly an hour before the endurance event. This contains loosely around 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. Seems to work well for me. I tolerate it well. It doesn't have much volume to it, so it sits pretty well in my stomach and has a quick effect. Um, I don't seem to get uh, any gastric distress with it. If I'm doing an extended duration endurance activity, um, I tend to use a carb caffeine gel mix or a um, carb caffeine gel solution during the event. So this practice will no doubt be very individual. Um, I feel overall it works well for me. This is not to say it will necessarily work for work well for you. Um, there are just so many variables to account for, but what is important is that you implement the principles and then you, you use those principles to guide you. Um, I'll be interested to hear in the comments below uh, what you guys do um, for your pre-activity caffeine fix and whether it's coffee, energy drinks, um, caffeine carb gels, etc., and uh, what your routine is in the lead up to the event and during the event with respect to caffeine intake.